Hmm. Should a phone be banana shaped? I think not. It's on. Google Authenticator and all those things are going to give me piles of hell again. But this happens. Sadly. Good morning and welcome to another sunny day here in the middle of nowhere. As you can see, I lost my phone. Oh no. And uh, well, we were out actually fixing a pipe and I slipped on a rock because these, these things, they don't really grip wet rocks very well. That's quite unfortunate because the phone isn't that old and uh, it's not a cheap thing. So I'm gonna have to replace that this week. I can't do without it. So I'm just here at my friend and neighbor's place, um, just checking things out for him. I can't actually send him a telegram now because uh, with my phone being out, I also don't have access to my Google Authenticator, which means I can't do any one-time pen stuff. I don't have backups for that. So that was kind of stupid, but kind of, I think I'm going to switch to Authy now. So if this ever happens to you, just consider Authy. You can actually back up your one-time uh, pin codes. So on that note, I thought I'd just cover the communications issue because if I'm away from home now, away from Wi-Fi, and as you know from other videos, the nearest town is on the other side of those mountains. The internet company's got a tower on the top of that mountain and they beam down to a closer tower and that, that tower beams down to us. And that is kind of how we get internet in areas. So it's very localized. So when I'm away from Wi-Fi at that point, there's no way to communicate. So I'm out here, I'm at my neighbor's place or I'm just on the other side of this hill. We're about two or three kilometers that side of the hill. There's not even a signal to the ISP on this side of the hill. So how do we communicate? And that is the question. So the only way to do that is with radio. Now the thing is with two-way radios, um, you've got different options in terms of what you're going to use. So you're going to use simplex, which is just radio to radio, or you're going to use duplex stuff that uses repeaters. Then you've got your license-free channels. Um, these are limited to 500 milliwatts or half watt in South Africa anyway. Um, I think it's called PMR, uh, personal or public mobile radio. Then in other countries it might be called FRS, free radio service or business radio service. There's a bunch of things, but it comes down to the same thing. The half watt does limit you slightly when it comes to obstacles. So over hills like this, we do have a bit of a problem. Um, we're in the open. I'm willing to bet, I'm actually confident that if I stand on top of that mountain, I would talk down here with a clear signal. So in, in the case of no obstructions and clear line of sight like that, the license free radios are actually perfect. You can buy them anywhere from 500 Rand a radio to uh, sometimes you get a four pack for 1,500 Rand, it depends. And I'll show you some of the ones that we're using here. The second option is to use the duplex radios where you would have a repeater on, on a high point like a mountain or a hill and you would be able to talk through the repeater. So your handset or your mobile system in the vehicle would basically tr transmit on one frequency and a repeater would repeat that on a second frequency and it's why it's called duplex. So your signal goes to the repeater only and then the repeater takes that and rebroadcasts it on a different frequency and that's why people in a wider area can get that. The downside is you need to pay license fees and you'll probably have to pay a, pay a repeater fee if you want to put up your own repeater, you still need a license for that frequency or at least that spectrum that you're using. In our case, it's with ICASA, the communications authority. So you need to consider that. Uh, paying the cost is not really worth it for us. It was back in Tilbach when we used uh, the radios for the Plaaswacht, the farm guard. So it's better for us to kind of sort things out with simplex and cheap radios. But one thing you can do is you can set up or use uh, someone in, the, in, a, in a central spot to basically act as a relay. So if there's an emergency, you need to have someone that can at least relay the message around. 
in an area like this, it's fairly open. Neighbors are there, neighbors are there. We're over here on the mountain. Uh, my friend and neighbor, where I'm, which I'm checking out his property now for him, he's over here. It works like this. And if I transmit from here, Alexia might hear it at home, but my father might not. Uh, my friend Tony over there, he will probably definitely hear it, but it is range limited. And people do build little repeaters where they add this radius together with the mic and the headphones together and they can do that. Like, it's generally not necessary, so that might be a cost-effective solution. Why do we actually need radios? Well, I suppose for the same reason you would have cell phones. Out here we do not have cell phone reception. It's probably a 10 kilometer drive to get to a 2G or 3G, bad 3G signal. So it's cell phone is not an option. You, you don't want to pay for satellite phones and stuff like this. So we all have a rule here that when we leave the house, we carry the radios and we leave our radios on at night. If anything happens out here, I'm alone here now and I'm a few kilometers from home or from anyone. So the radio is the only thing that I've got. It's important to carry this. It, they, they could be any emergency or let's say I just, I'm just repairing something and I need a part. Then I don't need to drive back home. I can maybe ask someone at home to bring it through, be a little bit lazy like that. There's many reasons for this, but it is important. Communication is important. Always keep it clear. Always remember to keep the batteries charged. Always remember to carry the radio. And today I've only got two with me. And these ones, I think these are the Cobras and I can't remember the model. It doesn't even say but these ones have eight channels they can scan between channels they can save memory so you can save memory on say two or three of your most used channels and scan between those channels and it scans pretty fast it talks pretty well it's got uh, all the other junk like the roger beep you can turn squelch on and off and volume controls i don't like that everything is so digital it feels a little bit failure prone but it is a solid radio once you take out the crappy batteries that come with it and you put in 2000 milliampere hours, this goes for two or three days for me. Works pretty well. It's got a little emergency torch at the bottom. It's pretty decent. Works pretty well. It's got a headset, can charge with USB, but it's also it, the, the pair comes with a USB dock. And then you get something like this. And I've got the Aster Fark as well, uh, which is a porcupine. This is the Boss Fark, made by RTS. In its free licensed form or unlicensed form, it's locked to 500 uh, milliwatts, so it's a half watt radio. If you have a license for your frequency, then you can have this unlocked and programmed to your frequency. Removable antenna, so you can put on external antennas, which is useful for a base mount antenna. Three. Easy to use, simple digital display that just shows the channel number, which is all you want really. It transmits pretty powerful, even at 500 milliamps. I think the antenna is really well designed for the frequency. Can you may ontvang? I can see by Paul sa See if my dad. I can ontvang yeah. Can you hear? Okay, quiet, duidelijk. So, very crystal clear. Over this hill, where this one probably won't do that, and we can do a little test. Okay, and he saw that now of the Cobra, who can I? Okay, donkey. So, that's actually impressive. Both of them actually talk over this hill. And I assume there's a bit of signal bounce going on against that hill there. That's helping the, the case. But that's three to four kilometers on the other side of the hill, and both of these are doing fine. You do, however, need to consider all the features that you want. My Midlands radios, the other ones that you will see there, is very slow at scanning. You literally scan like one channel every second, which means for the 80 channels that it's got, it will probably take two minutes to get through the damn thing. This thing, if you scan it, I don't know if you can see on that display, it's pretty quick, scans pretty quick. The same goes for these ones. These ones do have CTCSS and DCS which is just privacy codes. They call it privacy, it's not really. Privacy codes, no. It's actually more of a convenience setting. If you set to channel three and you set a CTC SS code of say 10 or 11, then you can only talk to other people in that, with that specific subtone. 
but other people can still hear you. When they try to talk back, you can't hear them. So it's more of a convenience issue for you to stick in a group, but other people can still hear you. So don't let that whole privacy codes thing that they advertise it with uh, sway you into thinking that it's actual privacy. It is not. Oh yeah, one note, these use proprietary batteries. So 400 to 500 Rand to replace this lithium battery. That is the problem where with these other ones, they use AAs, double A's and triple A batteries on the Midlands, which is easier to swap, cheaper to replace. So just consider that as well. That is also very important. So I hope that clears it up. That is how we communicate. We use it all the time. We use it to organize a braai. We use it to call each other to check in. We use it to know when we're at the gate. We use it for emergencies. We used it when we had the lightning strike and fire the other night. We spoke to Tony over there. So, must have. Even if you're on a small property, I think it's still a must have. But thank you. I know it's uh, gonna be a while before I get a new phone now, probably a week or so. For the Patreon guys, thank you so much. But I need to go check out Paul's property, make sure everything is okay and the baboons have not invaded his, his cottage and then get back home. So, see you next time. Cheers.